Mm, this is YouTube just a WMA again. Yes, I to begin. So, this is um, history of the universe. YouTube just WM. I mean YouTube just WM history of the universe in one year movie. And so um, this is going to be based on the cosmic calendar. Um, so every month is one and a quarter billion years. Every um. Every um. On this scale, remember every month is one and a quarter million, one and a quarter um, one and a quarter billion years. Every day is um. Um, I mean, every month is one and a quarter billion years. Every week is about two hundred eighty or three hundred million years. Every day is. Is um. Forty million years. Um. Every hour is one and a half million years and every every minute thirty thousand years and every second five hundred years. So um let's begin. First there was nothing then all of a sudden Bang And then all of a sudden, midnight January first on the cosmic calendar the big bang it happened the universe exploded into existence and here was the first, and the and the first atoms appeared. Hold on, first few minutes after mi I would say like um, like the first ten minutes after midnight on January first, you you had the cosmic, you had the cosmic after. Oh, sorry, just to know that you had the, re um, um you had the. Recombustion epic. Um, which I, I don't know. The photon epic was for the for uh, virtually the first ten minutes. There of red box. They're only, but most of them are all in instantaneous. Real even in real time, so you can't count them. So we can't, we're not going to talk about them on here, but um. The, and then the recombustion of a, I'm not sure how long it left. Recombustion. Cosmic afterglow is dark for about 380,000 years when the first atoms began to form. And then, like, about 18,000 years after the universe formed, how long would that be? Um, that would probably be about, um, around 45 seconds. Um, when the universe was about 45 or so seconds old uh, on the cosmic calendar, I mean, in terms of the cosmic calendar, on the scale of the cosmic calendar, to like, um, 380,000, to like 10 minutes, the, so on the cosmic calendar, not in real time. And then, um, and then from like, about 10, Ten minutes to like um, it was the cosmic dark ages from like three hundred eighty thousand years after Big Bang or like um, oh. um and then like um, oh well, that was about twelve, fifteen or fifteen min minutes afterwards after midnight on January first and on the cosmic calendar um to um. Sorry, just ignore any noise you hear in the background. To like, um, 150 million years in real time after the Big Bang, or like, January, around, January, um, 3rd. So, um, and then, um, so then the next, um, so and then the first, I'm oh, sorry, just ignore that we were there. First galaxies begin to form about, um, first, no, first the first stars, um, the first stars begin to form about, um, oh, I didn't put any stars in here, um, oh, well, um, the first stars and galaxies begin to form around, uh, 300 million years after Big Bang, or, like, January 7th. Of the first, and then the first planets probably, um, 
around that time too, around uh, no, the first stars around January 10th, first galaxy, first galaxies, January 14th, oh, the first stars and planets, January 10th, and the first galaxies, January 24th, and then, um, and then, hold on, the Milky Way forms in March, and then it resembles the galaxy we know today. In May, um, it formed 10, formed 13 to 12 billion years ago, and then resembled the galaxy we know today 10 billion years ago. Um, all right, and then on August 31st, the solar system formed, the sun and the solar system formed, or is it all that as a cloud, as a supernova hit a molecular cloud. They condensed into a, um, into, sorry, I, hold on, into, the, I mean, the cloud can, the molecular cloud, the nebula spin off into many different clouds that condensed into disks, which condensed into, condensed into clumps, which became protostars, which became true stars, one of which was our sun, um, in orbit in this system, there were planetesimals, this is also a tool later. Um, this is a picture of one planetesimal. It's also a tool. It exists, still exists. It's today. It's four. I mean, it's um, it was flew by by the um, New Horizons spacecraft in January twenty nineteen. Same spacecraft that flew by Pluto in July twenty fifteen. This, this were four back in time four point six billion years ago. As they fly around the star, the planets will accrete, and they grow bigger to each other. Eventually, they become protoplanets, and then um, over the next few days, like like about at like September second or third, the Earth is um formed. And then, um, it, um, this is our foreman, um, your really heavy bombardment's been going on since before the planets formed, since before the Earth formed. Already, the gas giants have formed, and possibly Mercury have formed, Venus and Earth, the rest, and later Mars will take, will follow suit, um, will form them. And then, um, 25 million years after the Earth for the Earth's age is like 4 billion 567 million years old. So 25 million years later, um, and, um, the lava ocean, the lava ocean, I mean, the whole globe, Earth melts into a lava, big lava ocean, a lava ball. An event known as the Iron Catastrophe, where the heavier elements like iron, nickel, and magnesium sink, sink towards the center of the Earth, while the lighter elements like carbon and oxygen float on the top. And then, um, so, um, um, <clears throat> and this event occurs on September 5th. September 7th, a planet the size of Ma just Mars, just called Theia, hits Earth just as the Earth's cooling and the iron catastrophe is ending. Earth is now 50, oh no, I mean September, um, this occurred on September 5th, no, both these disasters, hold on, no, the iron catastrophe, the iron catastrophe occurred on, or formed on October, on, um, no, September, Earth formed on September 7th, September 5th, I mean, the Iron Catastrophe, um, oh, September 1st, the Earth formed, the Iron Catastrophe happened September 7th, no, September 6th, I mean, the, um, moon hit the Earth 
Well, I mean the I mean the moon formed September third. Sorry, I'm messing up or stuttering them. And due to a collision with a Mars-sized planet called Feia, boom, boom. And this is what what it looks like. First Feia hit, then then impacted, then rings of debris, then disk of debris. Accretion distance with the moon points, maybe even two or three, or maybe even four. Four that one, some. This is what the early moon looked like. It was a molten world, it appeared fairly tight. It was a molten world like Earth during the Iron Catastrophe, and it appeared 30 times closer than it does today. And like 150 million years after the Earth formed them. Um, I mean the moon was 30 times closer to Earth than it is today. 150 million years after the Earth formed them. Um, um, asteroids and comets started raining down over. Oh, I mean it was. I mean Earth had oceans from the early heavy bombardment. It ended. And like between 4 billion and 3.8 billion years ago. Late heavy bombardment happened when the asteroids and comets and. Yeah, it's 150 right now. 150 million years. I mean, 4.4 4 billion years ago would have been. Um. About um. September fifth. On the cosmic calendar. Then the late heavy been. And then the late heavy bombardment was um. Um. And it oh, oh, lasted from like three, from like two point um, two point um, four um, two point four um. No, I mean like it lasted from September thirteenth to se through September eight seventeenth. Anyway, thank you for watching. Oh no, no I didn't mean that. Just ignore that. So on the so on the September twenty first or September twenty fifth, oh I would say September twenty first. That's when life began. The oceans, sorry, just ignore that noise in the background. Leak of the last. Oh, oh, I don't know which one. I'm I just ignore that. I mean the last universal common ancestor of everything alive today lived this creature. And then, um, I'm not going to go into detail about each super content. I'll do the whole phases of the Earth, what it looked, the Earth looked like. I'll do that in a bonus program. Anyway, um, in a whole mini movie or something like that, I'll do, um, anyway, I'm moving on. So, um, and then Earth, like, it, it did the Archeneon. Well, the Hadean was from when the Earth formed on September 4th, um, around whenever I said, I forget when in the last part, um, to like September, um, um, 25th, September 27th, and then, or if, um, and then, um, the Archeneon began on September 27th and lasted all the way through, um, to October, Oct November 15th, oh, no, October, no, November 5th or 6th, November 6th, and that, so, um, here we are, these are stromatolites, there's, um, you might remember, you might recall some familiar microbial faces from this part, this part of the story from welcome microbes. The oceans, there's cyanobacteria and archaea, uh, just the, the, the archaea emerge around them, October, um, October 2nd or 3rd, I want to say, um, and then, um, 
that's w around that that's when bacteria and archaea diverge from each other. Um, the top is the bacteria, the bottom is one moving as the gray one moving as the archaea, and the top one moving the green is one is the bacteria. And then nothing much changes for billions of years or many weeks on the counter. On the cosmic counter. On land, however, Earth is barren and devoid of life on land. There's no life at all on land. And then, um, except for they might be the first around them, this, around, around, um, I want to say around, Hold on a minute, I'll get back to that a little bit. The earth froze them. Um, the earth froze around them. Um, on, um, no, around November, no, around uh, October 30th or 31st, around Halloween, the first snowball earth happened. When the whole planet was covered in ice from the poles to the equator for 15 to 25 million years. And then um, it was colder than Antarctica. And then um, it happened again twice between six. Between, well, between like December 650 million. Or like um, between 600. Between 750. No, I mean 800 and 650 million years ago. Something like that. Or like in the first few weeks of December. I'm not sure the exact date. In the first two weeks of December. And then, um... So the, um... After, oh, before, um... Noble Earth, the only life in... I imagine it'll be in between the two snowball Earths, like, imagine, like, a billion years ago, or, like, this December 5th, the December 3rd or 4th, it would have been the first microbes on land, the first life on land, um, and in fresh water. Then the first, um, multicellular organisms didn't appear until December 7th, these creatures, hold on. I forgot around this time there was also a hold on. Mega gas sphere um this megasphere this or something like that, this creature. I'm not sure when exactly it was hold on. And then uh, and then also um um what lived um during the Ediacaran um these creatures in the background, they're Chardia. They they lived in um, they're Chardia. I'm not gonna go over that. You can check out my walking with microbes series to learn all about these animals, particularly, well, particularly the fourth episode. Um, so um, and then this is. Hartilia and Dickinsonia, the earliest animals, the earliest invertebrates. Anyway, um, oh, never mind. These guys live around, uh, in around December 7th. Alright, so for this next part, I decided not to show my face because they're that way there'll be more room for one more room room for one more creature so um here we are in the cambrian like um all the way on this december um this hold on 14th december 14th on the cosmic calendar is when the cambrian explosion occurs the first it's the first when it, of a lot of species groups of animals. It's not it wasn't a literal explosion, it was an explosion diversity of animal life in the oceans. They were the first arthropods. 
the first, um, the first, um, Nidarians, the, f like, jo no, Nidarians already appeared, like, Jellyfish and e Ediacaran appeared before. The first, um, mollusk, like, snails and clams and squid. The first, acotoderms, like, starfish and sea urchins. And the first chordates, including the first vertebrates, which were the earliest jawless fish, like haiku of these right here. So here's a number of carrots. It w was an arthropod. It lived in the middle Cambrian. It was a, a meter long or three feet three inches and lived in Canada, South China, Australia, and the USA. Sorry, just ignore that. And he was Hycophys, it was in the group Myloconingids. Lived in the early Cambrian an inch long it was an inch long or two two point five centimeters. And it was lived in China. Alright, the next period is um now I'll also hold on this to these trilobites. I'm not gonna get into them. They're just a camel. So here we are in the Ordovician, it's now December, um, Dece it's December 17th, so December, um, 5th, December 15th or 16th, here we have giant, here we have giant sea scorpions, the first sea scorpions, the first jawless fish, or more jawless fish. Get to them in a little bit. And then, um, hold on. Sea scorpions could have got as big as a, they were anywhere from the size of a paper clip to as big as a crocodile. They were the largest arthropods ever. They were these 20 foot long ornithocones, which looked like a squid with a shell. Um, and then there was a straspis, an armored. The first armored fish, the first armored jawless fish. It lived in the. It was in Agnathan or jawless fish, as I like, as I just said. It lived in the late Ordovician. It was between five and six inches, or fifteen and um, f fourteen and fifteen centimeters long, and lived in central was now Central North America. And then there was. And then there was a um. And then oh, there was the Ordovician mass extinction, which wiped out eighty six percent of all species that occurred on, like this December um December seventeenth um or eighteenth um December seventeenth it um it was four hundred forty four million years ago um it was four hundred forty four million years ago um. Caused by a gamma ray burst hitting the planet cooling it and causing an ice age. Also, some eutrophic activity, maybe, which means plants dying. The first plants and plant like life and fungus and lichens, cyanobacteria, all that on land died and decayed in the soil, and possibly, and washed out the sea. That possibly contributed to it, also. Anyway, next period the, the jawless fish, these organisms survived, but in the Silurian, but they were small. It's now, um, but the Ornithocone is only 20 feet long, oh, 10 feet long now, um, the Eurypterids are the top predators now, um, it's now December 8th, oh, December 17th, through the 9th, through the 19th, um, in the Silurian period, and then we come to the Devonian, where on December 20th, Twenty first, which is where the, which is what. Sorry if this is out of place. I don't have a place where this is, really. The Galosteus, I think it's only twelve feet long. I heard um. They, they we used to think it was like twenty eight feet long, but that's outdated now. It was an armored plated fish, an armored jawed fish, a placoderm. It was, apex predator. It filled the same niche as a killer whale or great white shark. And the first, um, on December 31st, the first tetrapods came out of the 
see uh, on Talan, the I mean the first Tetrapodomorphs, the first four-limbed vertebrates and their relatives. This is Tectolic, one of them, a, a group early Tetrapodomorphs or, or Cercopter genes or lobe fin fish, let's just say early Tetrapodomorph, early Tetrapodomorph, stem Tetrapods is what it is. It's a stem Tetrapod. It lived in the late Devonian in what is now Canada and Greenland. It was nine and three quarters of feet or three meters long. It was our ancestor from that time. This is like, we're like 375 million years ago. Alright, just before we continue, I want to review some of the things from the history of the Earth. The actual time, number, year, so, um, you'll see what I mean. So, um, from 4 billion, 4.4 4 4 and a half, 4 billion, 567 million years ago when the Earth formed, 4 billion years ago was the Hadenion. Uh, then the Archenion was from 4 billion to 2.4 billion years ago. Well, no, 4 billion to 2.5 billion years ago. And then the Proterozoikion was from 2.5 billion to 543 million or something like that years ago. Um, and then the Phanerozoikion is from 543 something like that million years ago to today. So, um, we're living in, well, I, I meant to say, um, the Hadean was the age of nothing, the Archean was the age of, um, Bacteria, the first Paleoarch and Neoarchean. I'm not going to go into detail the one to one, the dates for the all the Precambrian periods and epochs. Um, oh, I mean eras and periods. Just look them up if you want to know them. Um, the Paleo and Neoarchean is the age of them. Um, Bacteria, I believe, um, oh, the Eo and Paleoarchean. Then the Meso and the Archean, the Age Archaea, then the Fanners, oh, the, the, um, Mes, the Paleo and Meso Fanners, oh, is the Age of Protus, I believe, and then I'm not sure what was the Age of, and the Tauran and the Tor and Cryogenian, when the Snowball Earths happened in the Cryogenian, they were, um, and then the Ediacaran was the age of jellyfish. Uh, and then also, um, and then the Cambrian, and the Paleozoic era from 543 million and to ish years ago to 250 million years ago. It was the age of ancient life. The Cambrian was the age of, or the age of, um, Arthropodomotarids. Cambrian from, 543 to 485 million years ago, um, 485 million years ago, and the so the Ordovician from, I mean, from 485 to 441 million years ago was the age of ornithocotinoids and brachiopods, and then, um, and, and then, um, those were both the age of trilobites, and then from then the Silurian from 441 million to 415 million years ago was the, um, I believe it was either 419 or 421, no, four, oh, 419, from 441 million to 419 million years ago was the age of, um, the age of, um, Europe, there are the sea scorpions that we saw before, um, and from 420 to 400, I think it's 421 million years ago, the end of Silurian, again, the Devonian from 421 million to 360 million years ago is the age of, the Devonian, the age of armored fish, and from 400, oh, 360 million, 360 million to three. 299 million years ago is the Carboniferous, the age of in insects, arachnids, centipedes, millipedes, and amphibians. Then the age of um, 
and the Permian or the age of stem mammals was um, from 298 not 299 million to 250 million years ago. Here we are in the Permian, December, no, the Carboniferous, December 22nd on the cosmic calendar, um, 350 million years ago. Um, they're a giant. Well, hold on a minute, we'll get there in a second. First, 321, no, 300, from 375 million to 300. 60 million years ago. I meant the Devonian ended 358 million years ago. 375 million to 360 million years ago is the Devonian mass extinction. Wipes out like all the armored jawless fish. I forget how much, what percent of species alive at the time. All the armored jawed fish like the, like the Dugalosteus we saw before. Caused by a volcanic hyperplume. A lot of things in that and possible impact from outer space as well as definitely eutrophication. Out, I mean, ocean-wide algal blooms and uh, anoxic an anoxic event when the water lost oxygen and climatic hypothermia. I don't really know what that is. Um, and then um. But then, um, later on in the carbon vapors, there were eagle sized dragonflies, Megan called them um, Megonera, and millipedes is 10 feet long. In other words, the reason why they, the arthropods got that big was because of the, um, um, insects and spy. No, I mean, the reason why they got that big because they were. More oxygen in the atmosphere today is 21% in carbon the first times it's for, it's 35%. Um, and then, um, oh no, oh yeah. And then there was Petrovacus. So I'm not sure how big any of these creatures were because they're not in, as far as I know, they're not in my own book, in the book I have. Which I'll leave a link in the description too. And then also, um, Moving on, and also in the carbon vapors, because there's more oxygen in the atmosphere, fires could um, burn much more faster and more out of control, more violently. Moving on. Here we are in the Perme early Permian, 290-ish million years ago. So here we are. This is dim right here moving. It's dimetrodon. So this is what, like, um, it's like December 20th. December 23rd, um, um, uh, December 22nd was a carbon first December 23rd, early Permian, and then, um, this is Dimetrodon, it was a synapse, it lived in the early Permian, it was 10 and a half feet or 3.2 meters long, lived in Germany, was now Germany in the U.S., it was a, I believe, I made one with, even though it's often interpreted as a sail back, I made a speculative reconstruction that this wasn't a sail at all, just one big hump. I made this cool design. These are not shrink wrapped, don't worry, I would never show you shrink wrap. Try not to, I mean, at least try not to show you shrink wrapped animals. And here's Irops. It was a tenless bundle amphibian it lived from the late Carboniferous to early Permian in what is now North America was six and a half feet or two meters long. Here is the, uh, here is the uh, um, Gorgonopsid I should get. I, well, I don't have, I mean, it's not in my book, so I don't know how big it is exactly, but it was about the size of a grizzly bear. It was the first saber-toothed animal in history. This is now, we're now on December 24th, the late Permian, 252 million years ago. Um, and then, um, this is, um, Lystrosaurus. It was a cow size, pig size to cow size herbivore. It was, it was a synapsid. These are all synapsids, all three of these. It lived in the late Permian to early Triassic. It was three feet, three inches, or one meter long, and lived in Africa. It was now Africa, Asia, and Antarctica. It had tusks.
Well, did I mention earlier that Gorgonopsi was the first saber tooth in history? Uh, anyway, moving on. Our ancestor from this, t our ancestor from the Carboniferous, in case I didn't mention, was Petrolachosaurus. But now in the late Permian, it was Phrynaxodon. It was a synapsid that lived in the early Triassic in what is now South Africa and Ant South Africa and Antarctica. It was about the size of a cat or a fox. It was seventeen and a half inches or forty five centimeters long. But then, um, here comes um, two hundred fifty two million years ago, the biggest mass extinction occurred. Um, the late Perm the end Permian extinction, a great dying caused by um, a volcanic. Act type of volcanic activity called the a flood basalt and er, erupt in Siberia. This one was known as the Siberian Traps. It spewed out enough lava to bury the entire continental United States to the depth of one mile. Uh, um, and then enough basalt lava, I mean, to flood the United States, the entire continental United States up to the depth one mile high, I mean. And this occurred on December 24th. December 25th, dinosaurs like this Herrerasaurus finally emerged. Um, on December 26th, the first mammals appeared. This is the Triassic period. And then these two days, and then December... T no, December 25th is the Triassic. The first mammals also appear on December 25th. And the same day, later that day, the Triassic mass extinction occurs, two hundred and one million years ago. In two hundred, no, about two hundred, yeah, two hundred one million years ago. Um, caused. Sorry, just ignore any noise you hear in the background. It's the wind. Two hundred one million years ago, caused by the Central Manmatic Atlantic Providences, which was an igneous providence. Which is a type of volcanic or tectonic, which is a volcanic or tectonic activity, or both. Not really sure. Caused by um, some sort of magmatic eruption. Caused by it was caused by Pangaea breaking apart, and then um, it wiped out many of the earlier like Postasuchus. Hold on, Postasuchus right here, which was um, which was a um. Um, which was, which sometimes ran on all fours, um, sometimes would stand up on its highlands. It was a relative of the, of modern crocodiles. It was a Sukian, which they were the, this, some of them evolved in the crocodiles, like some dinosaurs evolved in the birds. He lived in the late Triassic and was between nine and three quarters and Fifteen feet or three to four point six meters long, and lived in the U.S. This is Herrerasaurus right here. Um, it was a theropod and lived in the late Triassic. It was between um nine and three quarters meters and um oh I think oh yeah and twenty feet long or three to six meters long and lived in Argentina. It was. I think it was a carnival on that tour. Um, oh yeah, it was a predator. Um, and then there was, um, into the tr Jurassic period, or like, about 145 or 150 million years ago, um, during the, um, during, this was a, um, This was, like, um, the, um, I would say about, oh, on May, um, I mean, no, I mean, December 27th, the first birds appeared, um, and December 28th, I don't have that amount here, but in the Cretaceous, early Cretaceous, the first flowers and bees and other pollinating insects appeared. I don't have them here, but... And then also on this... Not yet. This, oh, sorry, I forgot. We're not there yet. Um, December 
28th is when the, um, is when the first, um, dinosaurs, um, no, not first dinosaurs, I meant the first, that's when the, that's when, sorry, I'm distracted, that's when Allosaurus and Stegus, Saurus and Brachius, this is Brachiosaurus, um, so this is Diplodocus, all those Jurassic dinosaurs, um, with the Brachiosaurus and Passosaurus, then to, um, and then, um, the knife is when the first Tyrannosaurus Rins appeared. December 30th. By December 30th, it's 602 p.m. a.m., I mean. That's when T Rex, Triceratops, all that evolved 65 million years ago. They were around. And then, um, at that time. An asteroid the size of Mount Everest um, hit and exploded with the force of. Hold on, man! I forgot to mention that. The, before we get to the dinosaur extinction, I forgot to mention the um, the Triassic extinction lasted about six hundred or so thousand years, and then the six hundred fifty or so thousand years. The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs hit and exploded with the force of 7 billion Hiroshima bombs, causing and it what 70% of all species to disappear. I mean, this was the Chicxulub asteroid. Oh, 70, wiped out 70% 70 of all species alive at the time, causing the extinction of the dinosaurs um, and 70% and of all the species well, not just the dinosaurs, but, um, sorry, it lasted about, all the dinosaurs were dead within nine months, but the effects from the whole extinction event lasted, the whole mass extinction lasted, um, about anywhere from, 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 like, um, 50 to, um, Um, years to 300 years it could have been I'm not sure exactly um, anyway or it may have been as much as a thousand years it lasted anyway but that it, oh never mind alright real quick before we continue so far oh I forgot to mention that from one to one the Mesozoic era lasted this is okay. It was from two hundred fifty-one million years ago to um, two hundred no two hundred fifty million years ago to sixty-five and a half million years ago was the age of reptiles. First period was the Triassic from two hundred fifty million years ago to one hundred ninety-nine million years ago. Then was the oh the Triassic was the age of Rausukians um. Of Sukians, I mean, the ancestors of crocodilians, and um, the, um, then there was um, the um, the Jurassic, which was from uh, a hundred, no, two hundred and no, one hundred ninety-nine million years ago to um, one hundred forty-five. The Jurassic was from about um two hundred million years ago or one hundred ninety nine. No, let's say two hundred million years ago to um, to like um um one hundred forty five million years ago and the Cretaceous one hundred forty five to sixty five and a half million years ago. Those two periods are the age of the dinosaurs. So sorry, just ignoring the noise you hear in the background. Sorry, I can't say I can't say all the per from when to when the periods, eras, and epochs would last on the cosmic calendar. Um, I mean, sorry, I can't say from when to when the periods, 
the Epoch's periods, errors, and eons would last on the cosmic count, would be on the cosmic calendar. Anyway, so now, at now this December thirty, December thirtieth, at six o one in the morning, um, with the dinosaurs gone. Now the small mammals like Purgatorius comes out of hiding and takes over the world. I mean, they knock. Um. Well, that, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, I mean, they they start taking over the world. Purgatorius was a proto-primate. It was the size of a squirrel. Even though on the outside it looked like a rat or mouse. It had teeth shaped more like human teeth. Leading scientists to believe that it was the ancestor of all primates. From monkeys to apes to even humans. And then also, um... It... And then this is the Paleogene six, sorry, I hit myself. This is the Paleogene from sixty five million years ago, half million years ago. From sixty five million to twenty, sixty five and a half million years ago to twenty three million years ago. Then the um, this is in the Cenozoic era from sixty five and a half million years ago to present day. Then the um, also known as the Age of Mammals. Then from like. The Neogene lasted from 23 million years ago to 2 million 500. Thou oh, I mean, from 2 million 580,000 years ago. From 23 million years ago to 2 million 580,000 years ago. Um, and then, um, finally, the Quaternary from 2 million 580,000 years ago to the present day. So now on the cosmic calendar, um, like around thirty-five million years ago is when these creatures lived. On the cosmic calendar, that's like um, that's about one p.m. on the December thirtieth, and then um, the. Um, Sorry if I got distracted. And then, um, later on, um, as the grass, and then as the grass, well, this is like, um, well, that's like, um, about, um, two, those two creatures I showed you, hold on, we're not done there. These, um, this is Meritherium, it lived in swamps and Freshwater looked like a tapir or a pig. Lived like a hippo, but it um was more closely related to elephants. It, it was a proboscide and it lived from the early Eocene, late Eocene to early Oligocene. I mean, and then was three and a, nine and three quarters feet or three meters long. Lived in Africa. It was a herbivore. Sorry, just ignore me turning the pages. I'll, I'll, side, I'll tell you what book it is at the end. And then here's Andrew Sarkis, this creature, which was a hoofed carnivore, a mesonic nose. A, it should be classified as a mesonic, but it's not. It's an artiodactyl. It lived um in the Middle Eocene. Um, it was like 12 and 3 quarters feet long and lived in 12 and 1 quarter feet long, I mean, or 3.7 meters and lived in Mongolia. It was named after Roy Chapman Andrews. These creatures, um, I mean, the Andrusokas probably lived around them. Um, lived between them. Um, 48 and 37 million years ago or on the cosmic calendar. That's like, um... That's yeah, a... It's like between, uh, on December 31st, um... To, oh, Dece um... 
um, Decemberum, Decemberum, 30th at like 9 p.m. December 31st at like 4, 3 or 4, 5 a.m. And then there was Merifirium lived, uh, it doesn't say. Anyway, moving on. Next in the Nenogene, here's where the, as the forest shrink and the first grasslands appear to around them. At around, at around, um, at around 5 or 6 a.m. on December 31st. There is, the, um, Paris, here's Paraserifiri, um, it was, a uh, lived in the late Augustine to early Miocene, um, was 26 feet or 8 meters long, lived in Europe and Asia, it was a distant relative of rhinos, but bigger than modern elephants, it was one of the largest land mammals ever, also known as Indricophirium. It um, it was huge, so, and then here down here, I think this is a bear dog in size comparison. I don't know how accurate it is. Well, just ignoring that noise. And then there was um, this bear dog is like, um, is a, also known as Amphisyon. It um, it was a dist it was a sister. They were the Amphisyonids. The bear dog's a sister family to. Bears, modern bears and wolves, um, but they were modern bears and, I mean, modern ursids and canids or the dog family, um, but they were neither, um, and then, um, it lived in the Augustine to er mid-Miocene, it was six and a half feet or two meters long, lived in North America, Europe, and Asia, and then, um, It was a, a predator, um, a carnivore, while well, the Paraserifirium was a herbivore, I would say. Finally, now we travel to the, um, to the Ice Age, um, we travel to the Ice Age, um, of like, like, um, to, um, it's December 31st at 11.15 p.m., like the last 45 minutes of the cosmic calendar. And here we are, even though I know ground sloths and saber-toothed cats didn't live in cold climates, I'm just putting them here anyway, um, along with the woolly mammoths. Here we are. It's, um, here, this is Megatherium. It was a... A giant ground sloth. Um, it was a lived in the Pliocene to Holocene. It's twenty six feet or six, no twenty feet or six meters long, and lived in South America. It was a her an omnivore. Would eat plants, but also carrion. And then here's Smilodon or the saber tooth cat. It was um. It lived in the Pleistocene to early Holocene. It it was a cat, a big prehistoric big cat, and lived. Oh, I mean, it was six and a half feet or two meters long and lived in North and South America. The most well known and iconic Ice Age beast, the woolly mammoth. I know the ground sloth and the saber toothed cat lived in warmer climates, but. The mammoth did definitely lived in cold. I just put it here for consistency. I put them here for consistency. I mean, the woolly mammoth was um. It was it's the it was about the size of a modern elephant. Um, sixteen and a half feet. Um, or five meters tall at the shoulder. From the Pliocene to Holocene, and 
in in what is now Canada, Alaska, Scandinavia, across Russia, Siberia. That's all northern Russia. I know Siberia is a part of Russia, not important. And it was eight small plants. It was a herbivore. So now, at 6 p.m. on December 31st on the cos... No, 6 a.m. on December 31st on the cosmic calendar, monkeys split from apes. At like 8... 8 p.m. No, 7... Oh... 6... Oh, like... But, oh, like... 10 a.m. Orangutan split from the lineage that would lead to humans. 10, um... No, I mean... Um, 3 p.m. Oh, 3.30 p.m. Gorilla split from humans, um, around there, um, between 3 and 5. Sometime between 3 and 5 p.m. is when gorilla split from humans and chimpanzees. And at 8 p.m., chimpanzees split from humans. Around eight thirty or eight forty five Australopithecus appear, um they um um they diverge into the genus Homo one of if not the first species of Homo or human being Homo habilis, Homo means human or man. And then um later on in that hour they become Later on, between like 8.30, well, this is between the hours of 8 and 10, um, they be between 8 and 11, or 8 and 10, they become homo gastro, which later becomes homo heidelpergensis, which later diverges into the Neanderthals in Europe and the homo sapiens in Africa. And then oh, the first stone tools probably emerge. I mean, humans start using create and creating stone tools at around them. Um, um nine forty five or ten p.m. And then um, human brain size increases at um ten thirty p.m. Probably due to the, around that time humans discovering fire. And then, um, the Ice Age begins around then, too, um, and then at 11.48, and at 11.48, I mean, at 11.48 p.m. in 20 seconds, um, modern humans emerge. Then, um, at, like, 11.55 p.m., they migrate out of Africa. Probably, they migrate into Europe at, not going to go into t Europe, they reach at like, oh, I think I will, no, Asia first, um, um, at 11.55 p.m., Australia, at, um, or by 11.56 p.m., Europe, um, well, it's, well, I'm not going to go into any more detail on that really sure. It's going to be too hard and confusing. Anyway, moving on. Humans settled down around 10... Around 10,000 years ago. Or just like 20... 20 seconds to midnight on December 31st. Um, the agricultural revolution begins. Humans already a few thousand years ago or a couple seconds... Before several seconds before, uh, have domesticated dogs. Uh, they domesticate other animals like around this time, like horses. Writing is um, humans don't invent writing until like fourteen seconds to midnight, and, the, and that marks the dawn of recorded history. So we we'll pass the food. This is passed through ancient history um and. I mean, proto-history and ancient history. Proto-history is the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, the 
and the Copper Age. Have ancient history, antiquity, antiquity, you know. Uh, we pass for, and the middle, all the ancient histories, like all the way up to, like. Hold on, let's go for the details. Um, Moses was born like um, seven seconds ago. Buddha six, Jesus five, and Muhammad three. Um, and then um, I'm not getting wrote. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go in detail about religion. This is a science video, a science a science movie, a science channel, not a religious one. Don't worry. Anyway. But, so, Dawn of the Common Era was five seconds ago. Um, was about, that was about four seconds ago, around there. Um, uh, the um, Middle Ages began like three and a half seconds ago. Um, which, which is right here. No, sorry, I forgot to switch it. Um, and then, um, Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas only like one and a quarter seconds ago. Um, and modern time is everything after that. Um, um, but, oh uh, yeah, you want to go to, to see the last second? The first industrial revolution was 900 milliseconds ago. No, the scientific revolution was 900 milliseconds ago. First industrial revolution. Actually, um, I'm not going to detail the last second. It's too complicated. Um, I'll just say the scientific revolution was from one tenth was one second ago to one to 800 milliseconds ago. Um, um, but an average lifespan on this scale is probably um. About um, um, a fifth of a second, or two hundred milliseconds. All right. And this is here's the cosmic calendar I used. So in summation, that's that's the end. Let's just summarize. January first, the Big Bang. The Milky Way formed in May. Now the Milky Way formed in March and resembled the galaxy. Now in May, our solar system formed in late August. Life began in September. Life on Earth began in September. Animals didn't appear until um like December fifteenth. Life on land. December twenty first. And then humans, um, oh, I mean the dinosaurs, December 25th, dis they disappeared December 30th. Humans didn't appear until like, um, 9.25, around 9 o'clock at night, around 9.30 or 10. Modern humans didn't appear until, um, 11. This is wrong. Some of the things here are inaccurate. Modern humans didn't appear until um, 11, um, um, 40, 11, um, 11, 48 and 20 seconds. So, um, in recorded history it was only, um, the last 14 seconds of the cosmic calendar. Oh, and I forgot to mention the last ice age and did probably about um, oh, 20 seconds ago or 10,000 years ago, real time. Sorry, just ignore any noise you hear in the background. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll, um, also, uh, oh, hold on, I'm not done yet. One more part. So, um, I'll leave a link to this cosmic count to where this picture is. It's from Wikipedia. And yes, don't get me started on what Wikipedia is not a reputable source. It is a reliable source. It's a, 
misconception. You could, um, because even though yes, anyone could edit it, um, the inf information that they that people put edit Wikipedia with, I mean, they put on Wikipedia it won't it won't show in the when you read it. Um, uh, it won't show it unless it comes from unless they cite where they get the so their source where they get the information from. Anyway, um, we got a lot of the information for the animals in the book from this so from this from a lot of the animals in the movie from this book. Dinos the Smithsonian DK Dinosaurs and Prehistoric Life. A definitive visual guide to prehistoric animals. Which I'll leave a link to the I'll leave a link to if you in case you want to buy the book. Anyway, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Now, thank you so much for watching my movie, my documentary. Um, it took a few months to make it. Anyway, see you next time. Bye. No. Oh. No, no, no. Let's end with a joke. What did? What did the brain say to the heart? You're making me nervous. <laughs> Get that nervous, nervous system.